Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you how to create custom icons to use for folders on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 500 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about it, join us, and get exclusive content. So if you have a bunch of folders on your desktop or in your documents folder you may want to customize the icons. That way you can easily pick out each folder and know what's inside. So here I have a bunch of folders on my desktop and they're using the standard blue folder icon from Mac OS. But what I'd like to do is have custom icons for all of those. Now you can create your own custom icons using just the apps you have on your Mac. You can also use an image editor if you've got one. I'm going to talk more about that later on. For now let's just use what's built into our Mac which is the Preview app. You can do a lot with just the Preview app to customize these folders. So let's start with this Writing folder. Now to get the icon for it so we can edit it I want to select it and then I can go to File and then Get Info which is Command I. Now I'm going to select the icon here at the top left and do Edit Copy. I could also have just selected the folder, not brought up the Get Info window, and done Command C on the folder itself. Both would work for what we're about to do next which is to go to the Preview app. I'm going to launch it with Spotlight. Command Space, Preview, and then hit Return. And I'm going to do File, New from Clipboard. Now since I copied the icon, the icons in the clipboard, and it's going to create an icons file here with the folder and all the different sizes that the icon appears. So from highest resolution to lowest. If I had copied just the folder itself and done the same thing, Preview is smart enough to know that it can't do anything with the folder but it can do something with the folder icon and it would have created the same icons file for us. Now I can't do much here with this icons file unless I want to change all of these and I don't. I just want to change the highest resolution version. So what I'm going to do is make sure it's selected and I'm going to copy again and then I'm going to close this file and I haven't saved it so I'm going to just hit the delete button to delete it so it's gone. But now when I do new from clipboard just like before I just have what I copied which is the highest resolution version of that icon. This is a standard image file now. So now I can edit it. Now I'd love to be able to set the color for this folder. Instead of blue make it red, green, orange, whatever I want. Unfortunately you can't really do that in preview but you can modify the color a little bit. Click on the Markup tool there and then the Prism tool and then you have Adjust Color. Now there are a few things I could do here. One is I could change the tint so I can make it more purpley or more green. And I could also do things like the saturation and temperature and even sepia to go kind of with a tan or yellowish view. So you can play with all of these to try to change the color. So once you have a color you want to use now let's have some sort of interesting graphic on it. Now I could draw a graphic on it using one of these pen tools here. I can click the pen. I can click the line size. I can click the color of the line. And I could then draw on it. But instead I'm going to use a symbol. And you can get a lot of symbols just by typing text. So I'm going to click on the text box there and I have some text. Now I can just type something. So I can you know type some letters and have that represent the folder. I can choose a different font here. There's tons of fonts I can choose from. But I could also choose an emoji which means I have tons of symbols at my disposal. So I'm going to use Control, Command, Space to go to the Emoji Viewer and I'm going to choose something that represents writing since this is my writing folder. So I'll search for writing. There's a bunch of different things here. Let's choose this first one here and now I've got a nice little graphic. Chances are when you do this the first time it's going to be a lot smaller. So you want to select the text, go to Font here and change it to something big like 500 point. I can move this around, position it where I want. I can click the Selection tool there if you don't already have it selected. Select Outside of Everything and do Command A to select All and Command C to copy. Now I can apply this to the folder. I don't even have to save this file. But if I wanted to save it for later use I could do File, Save. And then I could select PNG as a good format. And make sure you have Alpha selected so it's semi transparent. And then you could save that out as a file to use later on. But I'm not going to save this one out. I'm going to go and click on the writing folder here, do Command I again, click on the folder icon, and do Command V to paste. And this will paste that icon there complete with that symbol. So now I have a nice folder for this. Let's do the same thing for travel here. 
I'm going to go back in and I'm going to hit undo a bunch of times. So Command Z to go all the way back to the original blue folder there. Let's hit the prism again and make some changes. Maybe make this a more purpley kind of folder. And I'm going to do some text. Select the text there. Delete it and do Control Command and Space. And then I'm going to select an icon. Let's do this globe here for the travel folder. Then I'm going to move this so it's centered right there. And then I'm going to do Command A, Command C, select the travel folder, Command I there, and Command V to paste it in. So now I have a unique folder there for travel. For business, I want to do something a little different. Maybe instead of using an emoji, I want to have a shape, but maybe one of those shapes from Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. If you go into Pages, and you click on Shape, you've got a whole bunch of different shapes to choose from. Starting off with the basic ones. But you can go to all sorts of different ones like symbols and people, science, all sorts of things. You can go to Work here and you can see a variety of different shapes that could represent business. So let's use this little organizational chart one here. I'm going to click on it and it inserts it in. Now I want to enlarge it because the larger I make it the better it's going to look inside of the icon. Once it's pretty big on the Pages document I'm going to do Command C to copy it. And I don't care about this Pages document anymore. I can just quit out of Pages. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to Command V to paste it in here. And you can see now I've got this organizational chart in here. I could have in Pages changed it to a different color or added a border to it for instance um, to do all sorts of different things. Whatever it looks like here when I copied and pasted it it would look like here. I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to select Outside, do Command A, Command C, select a business folder, Command I, Command V to paste it in and now I've got that. Another way to go is to use an existing icon to represent a folder. This is common if you have a folder that's filled with documents created by the same app. Like this Spreadsheets folder is going to be filled with documents created in numbers. I'm going to go into the Finder here, create a new Finder window. Do Go and Applications, Find Numbers, do Command I on that, select the icon for Numbers and do Command C to copy. Close that out. Go back in here and do Command V and now I've pasted the Numbers icon there. So now I'll center it there. Click Outside. Do Command A to select All. Command C. Select the Spreadsheet folder. Command I. Select the icon. Command V. And now I've got a folder that has the Numbers app icon on the folder which is kind of neat and it's easy for me to see what's going to be inside that folder. Now there's a couple problems here you should know about. The main one is that you can't do this more than once. That's right. Once you change a folder icon all you can do is remove it or use the new custom icon. It's a bug. Let me show you here. Let me go to this business folder and I still have in the copy buffer the Numbers app icon here. So I'm going to select Command I for the business folder here. I'm going to select the icon. I'm going to paste on it and nothing. You can see I am stuck with that look there for the icon. I can hit the Delete key and get rid of it and you can see now I've got no icon there. But if I try to paste that Numbers icon there. Again you can see it appeared there for a second and then went away. This is a bug. Hopefully Apple fixes it at some point. Until then if you do really want to change it a second time what you would need to do is create a new folder and take this new folder, set that to be the icon that you want and then go into this folder and move all the items from this folder into this folder and delete the original folder. Now you can also do this with the drives on your desktop. So I can select the drive here, do Command I, and I can click on the icon, do Command V to paste. It's going to prompt me for my password in order to do this. And then when I hit Return, now I've got that icon there. Now, naturally, if you're doing this for a hard drive icon, you probably don't want to start with that folder image first. You probably want to either create something from scratch or start with the hard drive icon and draw on top of that. Now it's a lot easier to create unique icons or icons from scratch if you use an image editing app. For instance you can use Acorn to do this. You can get Acorn in the Mac App Store. I'm going to do a video on how to create custom icons in Acorn. Another app that you could use is Pixelmator Pro. I'll do a video on how to use Pixelmator Pro to create custom icons as well. And also you could just look online and find custom icons already pre-made. 
So you could find these in different collections or just do image searches. I'm going to do a video on using that technique as well. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.